So we're starting um, chapter five, and for chapter five, I'm combining sections 5.1, 5.2, and 5.4. Um, so this video is just going to cover the main points, and the following videos will go over examples. And so combining these three sections, we're basically dealing with finding derivatives and in integrals involving the exponential function y equals e to the x, and then the um, natural log function y equals ln x. So these are two functions you've seen before in algebra, and so I'll do a very quick review. So this is the, the graph of the exponential function y equals x. And then note that y equals x and the natural log function ln x are inverse functions. And it's more apparent once I show the graphs of both of them. So this is the graph of the exponential function e to the x. And it's got a domain negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range is zero to positive infinity. So everything of the graph that's the curve in green lies above the x-axis. And it's an open parentheses around zero, so it's, it's not a bracket. Uh, there's a horizontal asymptote, and that horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. So for the left portion of the graph, that green curve gets infinitely close and closer to the x-axis, but never actually crosses the x-axis. The x-axis has the equation y equals zero. And then there's these two limits. And the first limit, it says limit as x approaches negative infinity, and then our functions e to the x equals zero. So the green portion, as it gets, goes to negative infinity to the, to the left, it gets closer and closer to the x-axis, and the x-axis is y equals zero. Now as x goes to positive infinity, so as x goes to the right forever, the green portion of the graph on the right side shoots up to positive infinity. This keeps increasing without bound. All right, so these, uh, this graph is from algebra, it should be review, and that's properties of the graph. If you want to take time to pause the video and write down this. Here's the graph of the natural log function ln x and its domain is zero to positive infinity its range is negative infinity to positive infinity and it has a vertical asymptote and the vertical asymptote is the y-axis which is x equals zero now the green graph on the left portion of it goes gets closer and closer to the y-axis and it never crosses the y-axis. So it, it goes down forever to negative infinity. So that another way of saying that is the limit as x approaches zero, and recall that zero with the plus means it's approaching zero from the right. So this saying as x approaches zero from the right, the curve the graph itself is shooting down to negative infinity and there is no left side limit all right so just note that the limit x approaches zero from the left that's what the minus sign means of ln and x does not exist because there's no there's nothing in the in the left side of the y-axis And then as x goes forever to the right, then the graph itself goes to positive infinity. It's just slowly increasing. Now something to note, I said these are inverse functions and they are inverse functions in the sense that, and if you look at the points I labeled, I have three points that I labeled. Uh, this one, zero, one, one comma e, and then negative one comma one over e. Now, if you look at the points on this graph, you have e comma one, one comma zero, and one over e comma negative one. 
the coordinates are switched, right? The coordinates are flipped. And then also when you do that, the domain and range switch. So the domain of e to the x is negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is zero to positive infinity, whereas the domain and range of the natural log graph is zero to infinity and negative infinity to positive infinity. So the range of the logarithm is the domain of the exponential. And the domain of the logarithm is the range of the exponential. And that's what happens when you have inverse functions of a switch. And the ver vertical asymptotes y equal, or x equals zero, and x equals zero is uh, the y-axis. All right, so those are the two graphs uh, that we've seen in previous course algebra courses. I just wanted to reinforce that they're inverse functions and their graphs sort of show you why they're inverse functions. Uh, this is an important property, is that since y equals l and x and y equals e to the x are inverse functions, we have two things. You can either do e raised to the ln of x, so that gives you x, or if you do the natural log of e to the x, that also gives you x. So it's kind of like the e and natural log sort of cancel each other out to where you just get the variable x. And then I wrote down theorem 5.1. 10, which is just the operations with exponential functions, which we've already familiar with, is that if you have two things with the same base in different exponents, you combine it to one exponential where you add the exponents. Whereas the other one, it's, if you're dividing, you're subtracting top exponent minus bottom exponents combined into one, one um, exponential expression. And these are also from algebra. Um, theorem 5.2 is just logarithmic properties. The natural log of one is zero. And uh, the second one, if you have the natural log of A times B, that is equal to the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. Uh, the third one, natural log of A to the N is equal to N times natural log of A. So you bring the exponent in front of the natural log. And then when you do division, it turns into subtraction of two natural logs. Whereas with multiplication, it turns into addition of two natural logs. All right, these two theorems, 5.10 and 5.2, are from algebra. This is prerequisite information that I'm assuming you will know. And note the natural log of E is equal to one. All right, so this leads us and this is all review. Now we're going getting into the new information. And when we dealt with integrating x to the n, uh, we got one over n plus one, x to the n plus one, and then plus the integrate constant of integration c. This was as long as the exponent n was not equal to negative one. So the question is, how do you integrate it if n is negative one? In other words, integrating x to the negative one dx. Well, that involves the log rule for integration. And for the log rule of integration is anytime you have one over some function u, and then it's take, integrating with respect to u, then that turns into the natural log of absolute value of u plus c, where you use differentiable function of x. So for x to the negative one, that's one over x. So when we integrate one over x, that turns into the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So now we can integrate when the function or expression has a negative one exponent, because it's the same as doing one over that same thing. And it always turns into this natural log of x plus c. All right, so that's the new information. And what I wrote here is um, derivative integration formulas for the natural log. And if you take the derivative of natural log of u, that's equal to one over u times u prime, where 
u prime, that is the derivative of the function u. So u is a function of x. And so this is basically using chain rule. So the outside function would be like the natural log part. The inside function is whatever u is. So by chain rule, it turns into derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the outside piece is 1 over u. And the derivative of the inside portion is the u prime. And then for the natural log formula, which we already just wrote earlier, so you integrate 1 over u, you get natural log of the absolute value of u. We use a differentiable function of x. So in the following videos, <clears throat> I'll be making use of these two formulas. And here's the derivative integration formulas for the exponential function phase e. Now, interestingly, you see that <clears throat> taking the derivative of e to the u gives you e to the u, and then times u prime. And integrating e to the u also gives you e to the u, so then plus the constant integration. So when you're taking the derivative of e to the u, where you use a function of x, you get e to the u times u prime. And then when you're integrating e to the u, you get also get e to the u. This time plus c, where you use a differentiable function of x. So the point is that the exponential function f of x equals e to the x is defined such that its derivative and antiderivative are the same. It gives you the same thing, e to the x. So taking the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and integrating e to the x is e to the x. Um, it's just up here I have it written in chain rule form. If I wanted to be technical about it, since we know that's our rule, u is x, that means u prime is 1. Right, derivative of x is 1. So when you take the derivative of e of the x by chain rule, that's going to be e to the x, that's like our e to the u, and then times u prime, well u prime is 1, so it'll be times 1. So it's e to the x. All right, so that's where I just remember this, and it is applying this general or chain rule formula for e to the u. It's just our function u is x itself, so u prime is 1. Likewise, when we integrate e to the u du, you get e to the u plus c. In this case, our function u is x. So taking the derivative du is dx. So e to the x dx is equal to e to the x plus c. All right, so these two things I've starred. These are the new information. And uh, I just wanted to first go over just some review of the, what the logarithm function and exponential function are and it's essentially their inverse functions and um, the domain and range of one of them is switched to the domain and range of the other one and then i wrote down just a property with the inverses is that if you you perform one operation with the next doing e with ln of x you get x or if you do ln first and then e to the x, you also get x. Um, and then just some rules, operations, theorem 5.10, that's review, and then theorem 5.2 is also just formulas that we've learned from algebra. All right, and that's it for this video. The next video, I'll actually go into examples using these formulas.